<laughs> okay, Diva, so I started this channel because I wanted to make it for me before I started gardening to just show people how accessible it can be. And um, so this time I wanted to talk to you about things you can grow in the summer, which is the answer to any season is grow whatever you want. <laughs> Hoard all the plants that you like and then, uh, yeah, because that's what I do every time. Anyway. Uh, I just want to give you some ideas of things that you can, that might be a lot of fun and really successful to try in the month of, in the summertime ish. We're getting towards that time. Um, I don't know how long the spring lasts. I don't know. Well, what I want to say is that you can start <laughs> that soon. Around I think May tenth is what they say would be a, a good date. Is when you can start putting out tomatoes and jalapenos, uh, tomatoes and peppers. <laughs> I am growing jalapenos, I don't know about you. I'm also growing chiles. Um, yeah, so they're fun plants to grow. You can grow them in containers if you're, you just get the biggest container that you can. I think uh, at the cheap end, I've seen some for like some half barrels, some really cheap half barrels uh, for $15. I've seen some around $25, so that's around the range you're looking at for those, depending on what store you go to. Um, um, and yeah, so you can uh, easily grow a really nice tomato or a jalapeno or some pe uh, or a couple of pe uh, a couple of pepper plants or a couple of uh, maybe even a cucumber if you have a a fence that you can trellis it on or <laughs> if you get really creative, I don't know. <laughs> I'm suggesting those plants because they are. Uh, they don't take up a lot, if you grow them vertically, they won't take up a lot of space and they'll give you a lot of production. The reason I'm suggesting these is because they are high production for very little space, especially if you grow them uh, vertically. Uh, which for tomatoes, uh, I, I, I grew them vertically last year, it was a lot of fun because um, I don't have to be in the in the ground and it was so great. So if you, you can, yeah you can, uh, the way that I do it is I set a, I set a, when I plant a tomato, I put a stake in there, and then I grab some elastic, and I tie. You want something that's gonna have some give, that way it doesn't strangle the plant. And, um, if you pay attention to the tag, they'll always tell you to ba bury two thirds of it. So you want to take off the leaves at the bottom and leave a little bit of the plant. And the deeper you bury it, it's got these little hairs on it. Um, the little hairs turn into roots, so it'll be a stronger plant if you, if you, um, if you bury it. If you bury the stem, um, two thirds of the stem down. As it gets growing, you just keep an eye on it, and wherever you see the little, so there's, so here's the growing stem, and then here's the here's the, it, the that goes up, and then the, it'll shoot stems to the side, and every once in a while it'll shoot it'll shoot a stem like this. It's kind of, and so these are will tr turn into another vine. So you just want to always like plug these off. You can just grab your finger and. Ch and it, and it comes out super easy and then toss uh, toss that and then it'll keep growing up because you don't want it growing out you want it to keep you want it to keep growing up that way it can um, that way you don't have to worry about space it makes it easier to pick there's wind blowing on it it's away from the floor so you have uh, a lot less pest problems so it makes it a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable to grow tomatoes that way Here's a photo of my tomato. What my tomatoes looked like last year. Uh, I didn't have any nice pictures. This is actually when we had our first frost and everything froze over. You can see that I used some twigs from trees we pruned and some little skinny bamboo to hold them up. We probably wouldn't have done much if they went to full size. Also, the ground here uh, we have a a raised bed with just clay dirt, so I have to amend that, and that's probably why they didn't grow so well. But we still got a lot of tomatoes, so it was great. I'm going to till it with a pickaxe and then I'm going to uh, mix in some compost and some peat moss, uh, uh, a bag of peat moss and hopefully that lightens it up and lets the tomatoes grow a lot bigger this year. I'll make a video of how I amended the soil and how I planted the tomatoes once I get to it. First I need to find wood. <laughs> if anybody has <laughs> some wood they want to get rid of, hit me up. Especially the big, uh, the big chunky square ones. You can find steaks at Samso's for a couple of dollars, so they, that's the cheapest place I found them, so that's where I would recommend. 
just like the I just got the green one so I'm gonna try them out I have seen people use sunflowers as stakes at the sunflower stock so if you grow sunflowers this year maybe you can use them next year as poles uh, to grow stuff on so like I said wait around May 10th uh, and then once you put them out uh, just keep a lookout if you have a phone install your weather app or check it every day and, or the weather uh, changes every hour so uh, like today which is yesterday <laughs> today which is yesterday uh, we had rain but it was only at the very beginning of the day and there was a 10% chance of rain for the rest of the day so it was a sunny day for the rest of the day so I had put everything away and then I took it all back out because we had a sunny day and um, but I did see that we we're that we we're gonna have 38 I think 37 degrees so that was gonna be cold I think under 32 is when you run into the chance of frost so I knew that that wasn't a that was definitely not okay for the warm season plants like my pepper seedlings and my tomato seedlings and I also have uh, perennial seedlings of uh, flowers that I um, knew were not probably not gonna do okay so they've been there for a couple for a week now I think just I've been trying to give get them in a shady spot so I can get them um, so I can harden them off to the to the to the climate uh, to the outside <laughs> temperatures and uh, to the outside cold um, so I just put those in my uh, shed hopefully they do okay well I'll let you know next week if they don't <laughs> and um, and the tomatoes and peppers I brought indoors because uh, yeah they're not they're not meant to be that cold so yeah any time you see temperature under 40 degrees is the time to if you're able to bring your plants in bring them inside or put them in a shed if they've been accustomed to to cooler weather at night or um, or if you've already planted them you can just find whatever plastic anything you can put over them you can use uh, milk jugs just cut off the bottom and flip it up just cut off the bottom and, and open the top that way the you know, I, don't, you know, I don't think you even have to cut up open the top but uh, it, it's good to open the top in case you forget so it doesn't burn in the middle of the day if you forget to check on them. You just want to put some sort of plastic container container over them so that they the or the cold wind doesn't get them and it keeps them a little bit warmer and gives them a, a better fighting chance. And things that, are, that I wouldn't recommend going out to buy right now is anything that is a cool weather crop, things like spinach or lettuce, um, kind of things that you eat leaves off of. Are not a good idea or cilantro because um, those uh, whether they don't they can't handle the the warmer weather so as it gets warmer they'll start kale too so they'll start wanting to produce seeds and and their life cycle so uh, uh, so they'll fly uh, and as they get ready to flower they'll um, their leaves will start tasting bitter so they'll become a little bit more uh, inedible and they'll start producing flowers so Yay, if you have some already, you will you can try to save seeds, but if you're, uh, it wouldn't be a good idea to go out and buy some uh, until close to fall. Things to look out for is if you're thrifty, garden centers might, uh, might discount some of their spring or summer bulbs right around now, or, um, and, um, or sometimes it, a lot of times they forget to water plant. So sometimes you can get a deal on something really cute for really cheap. So there's some that I that I wouldn't buy again uh, if they were uh, some that I would not buy again at clearance. Or I wouldn't buy uh, blanket flowers because once they get over watered, they just don't don't recover. Uh, lobelias if they dry out, they don't really recover that well. Those are the ones that I know or that I, from experience I've purchased on clearance and they haven't done well. So I would, rec I would recommend avoiding those. Uh, but things like all the spring flowering stuff you might be able to get on sale if they're trying to get rid of it. Uh, a lot of the box stores don't, they're not nurseries so they don't, they don't circulate their things. They don't have a system for it so if if they're done with it, if it's done blooming, they'll they'll discount it or throw it out if nobody buys it. Another thing to look for right now is uh, bare root perennials. I recommend getting bare root um, perennials because uh, they take a. I'm growing some seedlings right now and they're taking forever. So if you 
if you get a bare root one, you're gonna if you're just starting out in gardening, a bare root one will give you more chance of having a success with it because it it'll have a lot of life in it. And it makes it a lot easier. You just take it out of the package, uh, soak it in water for a couple of hours, and then put it in the ground and water it, and it does all the work for you. And wait for it to sprout. <laughs> uh, this year I bought I bought um, dahlias. I bought dahlia bulbs this year, so they're gonna be uh, blooming in the summer. But I started, uh, I woke them up early winter. So right now they're about a gallon. I had them in little gallon size containers and they completely filled it out and now they're in the landscape. Um, I bought so many things. I got bleeding hearts because I wanted, I like them for the shade. There's just too many to list. I got asparagus in the early winter. Uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these bulbs, they did not to plant them until the last, uh, the last frost. So right now would be a good time to buy them and put them in the ground. And uh, one last thing, because it's something that I'm experiencing, is uh, uh, um, is if you're planting tomatoes, it's a good idea to underplant them with some marigolds. Uh, because they they deter a lot of pests and they're so pretty to look at and uh, Another uh, other plants that you might want to just put all over the, your garden especially around your edibles or I, I or just everywhere are Elysium and yarrow because they attract hoverflies which will um, Which will attack aphids which I'm currently dealing with I found aphids on my columbine and on my lettuce. I don't know if Elysium is perennial, but I know that yarrow is, so it comes back every year. And it actually stays green for most of the year, so that's what I love about it. It was the first thing to show up in the early winter, so I was so excited to see it. And uh, and it shoots out, um, and all the branches, if they're touching the ground, will root, and it'll shoot up, and it'll send a lot of branches from the ground that'll be that'll have a lot of roots. So it's super easy to split up and make into new plants. So you can put them all over your garden. So plants like that are a really good investment because you buy one, it comes back every year, and you get a lot of plants from it, and it attracts beneficial insects. So, and just in general, the more diverse. Uh, the, uh, the diverse uh, your garden is, the healthier your plants will be because you won't have a perfect food supply for one kind of insect, different scents to throw them off. And it'll just be really pretty to have pretty uh, to have nice, th nice things to look at. The more diversity you put in your garden, the, the healthier it will be and the more pretty things you'll have to look at. Uh, so many times I find myself staring at everything and when you're when you are the one who put your landscape together and who planted everything you know what everything is you know the story of how you got it and you get to see its life cycle um and if it's a perennial you get to see it every year so it's a lot of fun <laughs> so many times i find myself sitting down because i uh i saw something cool and i want to look at it some more like today I uh, saved seeds from a kale that started flowering. It's an ornamental kale, so pretty, and it and it's like a purple. It's purple and pink in the in the fall, so I I don't think I'll be able to grow any that will be mature by the time fall comes around. But I'm gonna try. It's gonna be a lot of fun, um, and uh, the uh, it might just be a little thing. It won't be lush, but I'm excited to try it. And uh, what else? Today I got some shamrocks, a shamrock, which is um, Oxialis strangularis, I think it's, but it's this pretty little, like, it looks like a little, um, it looks like a little shamrock, <laughs> but it's a deep, deep, beautiful purple, and it's so nice, uh, it opens that in the day and it closes that night, it's the cutest thing, and they're just little sprouts popping up, oh, very similar to this color, <laughs> and, um, and they just they just like, glisten in the light, they, and it looks like little like burgundy glitter. Oh, kind of like this, <laughs> and it's um it's really pretty. And I think I got I got them half off, so that was really exciting. Okay, so that's all of that, divas. Uh, in the comments, let me know what you're growing, and if you have any questions that you think I might be able to answer, and follow me on Instagram to see I post I post stuff all the time. Uh, I post plant pictures all the time, and um. And if you're able to support me um, while I'm out of work, while drag isn't happening with the peoples, while I can't work at the bar, uh, feel free to, uh, to uh, drop one penny into my uh, Venmo uh, at La Bruja del Noreste. <laughs>
<laughs> it's uh it's down below and thank you so much see you later see you next week hopefully i'll be more prepared my friend lillian made this isn't it beautiful she is in red light variety show check her out she's amazing <laughs>